Yo what's up guys welcome to my humble youtube channel where I bring you fanfiction that will brighten your days. Before we start a subscribe is greatly appreciated and don't forget to leave a like and ring the bell icon so you won't miss exciting new fanfiction stories. That time I got a socket as a slime. Danmachik's T Tiggers, by a walker 0641. Chapter 9. Trickster meets slime it was another day for a frustrated trickster. She was going through a dry spell in her booze and her kids. Well. Oi. What do ya mean ya, lost, er? Her vermilion eyes squinted till no one could not see her irises. She was starting to develop a headache. Well Lady Loki. We were tracking her but she tried to loose us by doubling back, backtracking, and then going in a circle multiple times. Afterwards she disappeared into a crowd and then jumped down an open manhole into the sewer. He reports to her. That's where we lost her. Her kids were always being thrown off or lost in a game of cat and mouse with the person of interest. This latest report was from the best sniffers she had available. TCH. If Bet was here he'd be able to follow her. Well, not much ya can do. Go out and try again will ya? Yes, Lady Loki. This whole week, ever since she got that letter from Finn, she has been looking for this Rimuru Tempest and Hinata Sakaguchi. Turns out there was not even a piece of information about either of them. She exhausted all of her connections and even at the guild there was no trace of them. She was even considering asking that slut. Yet, she probably had the same amount of information she did. They were ghosts that just appeared one day. She stopped sending her kids after Hinata since she threatened them with bodily harm. They said that her gaze was so cold that it scared them stiff. She was frustrated. Her, the goddess of one of the most powerful familias could not learn about two people. Granted most of her familia were currently in the dungeon and should be returning soon. But she should have learned something about them. Yet not a shred of information has reached her ears besides how scary the black-haired girl was and how elusive the silvery blue-haired one was. She sighed dejectedly. I need a drink. Some soma would be amazing. She gets up from her office and walks down the hall to exit her home. She went out the gate without any guards accompanying her. Where were her kids right now? Well, besides the ones guarding, they were out looking for this Rimuru. She walked down the busy street suppressing her aura looking at all the people. She was lost in thought about this mysterious duo. Before she knew it she arrived at her destination. Nya. Lady Loki. What do Meow want today? Oya Anaya, I was hopping for a little drink. The cat girl's tail swishes with a finger on her chin as she thinks. It was true that Loki did not pay her tabs and Riviera had to pay for them. But as long as someone paid, Mia usually never turned them down. Sure Loki, NYA can come on in. Anya walked in with Loki and seated her at the bar. As she left Mama Mia approached Loki. Oi, what do ya think er doin, er, Mama? I need a drink. My kids ain't home and I ran dry. She complained to her with her head on the table and eyes jumping from the counter and the half dwarf. Ya got any money on ya? Mia looked at her sternly. She knew Locus antics well enough when it came to drinking. And if she did not have cash on her now Riviera would pay. On multiple occasions she would have to listen to Riviera try to tell her not to serve their goddess. She was getting tired of it. Well. Loki looked away with guilt, no but. Then ya ain't get nothing, she said in a huff. All Loki could do is sigh in defeat. Indeed today was tough. However when the door opened to the place it started to look up. There was her target. That blue-haired, golden-eyed girl opened the door and looked. Well just like Loki. Downtrodden. She was not dressed in her black outfit Finn had described. No, she was in a white t-shirt with blue overalls and flip-flops with her hair in a messy ponytail. It looked like she was wiped out. Lunir went to seat Rimuru but as she approached she stopped. Loki looked closer and swore she could see black clouds above her. Today was a rough day for Rimuru. He was not sure where to start. With how things went mapping the north part of the city he knew one thing. He wanted some alcohol. Today he was going to get drunk. That was all there was to it. He turned down his poison resistance. Raphael did not try to stop him. He figured it still must be upset so he entered the benevolent mistress. As this Rimuru walked in, she was mumbling something about, stupid plants, and how she was never going to doubt it again. Loki wondered what, it, was. Yet, that did not matter, it seemed like she was gardening. Loki could relate to that. 
It was not long ago Riviera tried to get Loki to plant some flowers and bushes in the garden. It was an effort to get her to slow down on drinking and messing with familia members. However, it did not go as planned for the elf. Loki was not having it. So, that night she got drunk and burned down the entire garden. She barely remembered what happened afterwards. As Rimuru entered he noticed there were not as many patrons as usual, probably because it was not yet dinner time. So he entered and saw a stool that was empty. He sat down and waited for the bartender. Rimuru sat down on a stool not far away from Loki, his chin resting on the pub counter looking at the alcohol on the shelf. As Mama Mia came up to Rimuru to get the order, all he did was hold up a finger and said, Strongest ale please. Mia just nodded her head and poured a whole mug full of ale. Loki looked at the strong, frothy, delicious alcohol and all she could do was lick her parched lips. There was Loki's current target approaching the person she was looking for. Sure, she could ask some questions but she was on a more important mission right now. How to get some booze through her lips. Then a plan started to form in her head. As the ale passed through Rimuru's lips he was delighted to have something with alcohol in it. Hanada was a stickler when it came to booze in the house. And he did not like it. Perhaps it has to do something with that child's tongue she has he thought to himself. He was sure that very soon her bathroom stopped working. Not that he would have anything to do with it. A plan started to form in his head. Loki watched as she chugged that whole mug down. Slammed down the mug and sighed in delight. She another one and Mia went and gave her another fill. It was almost time to enact the plan. Rimuru was delighted to have something so refreshing. It was a rough day. Cutting down man-eating plants sure was a chore. Especially how many there were. The bartender came and gave him another mug. It was not as good as Tempest's but it would do. As he was about to drink it, out of the corner of his eye he caught someone looking at him. He peeked over and saw a red-haired. Man? Woman? He was not sure, he asked Raphael but. That is all he got in response, it must be still upset with him. So Rimuru tried figure it out himself. She has a red ponytail, no chest, a taut butt and feminine legs. So that means it is a. He still was not sure. When he was alive on earth he was almost fooled once when something similar happened to him. Just remembering it sent shivers down his spine. Also he had a female body and a soul of a man. So he decided not try and talk to that person. Loki watched as she downed another mug of ale. Mia went up to her and shook her head. What do ya think her doing? Trying to get drunk? All she got in response was a nod and after a few minutes a couple more empty mugs. Loki knew it was time. As the bartender was going to get Rimuru a refill he heard the stool next to him sliding. He looked over at the stool and saw that red-haired person sit next to him. Oh great, he thought, here comes trouble. He knew that he had to be careful. Especially with ale this strong. Yet he was not going to turn up poison resistance to loose this drunkenness. Oya, oh yeah, I never seen the likes of Yaw around here before? Ya knew or something? As Loki asked this question to the woman, all she got was a nod must not be much of a talker. Loki then introduced herself. Well I'm Loki. Head of the Loki familia. Everybody knew who Loki was and that her familia was one of the strongest. Yes, everybody knew. Rimuru looked at Loki. When Loki said the name, it finally clicked. Yep. Loki was a guy. It obviously made sense due to the connections this world seemed to have with Earth's mythology. Now he was in no way versed in Greek, Norse, or other mythologies around the world besides Japanese. Even there his knowledge was lacking. But obviously everyone knew who Loki and Thor was thanks to the Americans. Also, he was flat. It's a pleasure to meet you Loki, I'm Rimuru Tempest. When she said her name Loki knew she was not lying, now it could be possible for her to be a god and Loki would not be able to tell the difference between a lie and a truth. However, she could tell this was not a god and so she was able to deduce that her name was in fact Rimuru. She smiled at her. It's nice to meet ya Rimuru, how about cutie like ya buy me a drinky? When he smiled at Rimuru and asked for a drink, he was beyond confused. A man asking him for a drink was new. Usually it would be the other way around because he looked like a girl. Oh well he thought, I'll just tell him the truth. I'm a guy. Now as Rimuru looked back, he knew he should have finished there however. And shouldn't a guy like yourself get your own drink? While finishing his fifth ale. Less than notice. Loki is a woman. 
greater than Raphael said smugly. At this, it became eerily quiet between them. Anya and Chloe ran off to a corner flicking their tails with excitement. Lunier hastily walked into the kitchen to avoid what was to come. Seer stood at the end of the bar counter with her eyes and mouth open in shock. Ryu was coming down the stairs at the time. And Mia was behind the counter, eyes open in shock. Loki was beyond pissed. Oh she took the flat comments well enough but being called a guy. Oh that was the end of the rope. Sure she thought Rimuru was a girl but this, calling a goddess a guy, this was a terrible offense. Loki was a woman. Rimuru had the wind knocked out of his sails. Raphael, his partner, just told him the truth. Right after he said that. That to her. Oh shish. That was all he could think as her divine aura started to show. And she was a goddess on top of it. He knew he screwed up bad. He had to recover fast before he got smited. Loki's anger was bubbling over. Sure she did have a flat chest that the cow tits made fun of her for. But she never called her a man. Loki swore up to Tenkai that when her kids got back she'd. Rimuru threw out a fat sack of cash from his overalls, which did not go unnoticed by an elf, and held up four fingers. He knew what he had to do. Mia calmly looked at him, grabbed the money, checked and felt how heavy it was, and then poured four mugs, placing them in front of the pair. She'd have her kids beat down his familia. Then Loki would take him to torture him, beat him so bad and break every bone in his body. She would then have them healed and repeat the process over and over again. She would make him regret every calling her a man. Heck, she would even let bet. Rimuru saw Loki's face becoming redder and redder. He knew he had to act fast. He grabbed three of the mugs and set them in front of Loki. He saw her look at them. She would even let Bet not know because she would probably forget anyways. The alcohol in front of her was something she needed. She looked at the sack of cash in Mia's hand and she knew she was going to be drinking for the whole night. A smile erupted on her face. Rimuru then spoke up. Uh, I guess we got off on the wrong foot. Let's restart. I'm a man named Rimuru Tempest. I'm buying all your drinks tonight beautiful. Loki looked at the ale then Rimuru, I guess so. I'm the goddess Loki, thanks. The rest of the night after the peace negotiations was rather pleasant between the two, along with the consumption of a lot of booze. Doubting the skill Rimuru was out walking in this amazing morning. The sun was starting to shine in him and Hinata were getting along fine. However, are you sure this is the right way? I feel as though we have been going in circle. Less than notice. It is your imagination. Greater than ha. Huh? Are you sure? I swore I've seen that sign before. Less than it is your imagination. Greater than in that potted plant, and that mark on the street. Raphael, are you lost? Less than no greater than Rimuru was mapping as usual with his trusted partner. But it seemed off to him. He was doubting whether it was actually heading in the right direction because they seemed to be going in circles. Less than head north. Greater than ah here we go back on the path, although it sounded irritated. He started to walk into a crowd of people, after a little bit he lost his footing. Splash. He fell into some liquid. As he looked up he saw something float by him, and he had his magic sense going too. Which included smell. To say he was filled with shock was not even close to the truth. Shock and terror filled his face. He tried to turn off magic sense. Raphael. Why are we in the sewers? Did you do this on purpose? Raphael? Less than walk forward. Greater than okay I'm sorry for doubting you but please let me turn off the smell function and let me get back to the surface. Less than walk forward. Greater than all he could do was sigh in defeat to his skill after hearing its stern voice. He could not argue against it. He knew that he would never doubt it again. While down in the sewers, he ran into more man-eating plants. After killing some he thought to himself, stupid plants. He trudged on mapping and killing plants till Raphael would tell him how to get out, then he went drinking.